Hello and welcome to A Slice of Pie, the weekly news show that does not do the news sitting down. Because uh, green screen doesn't like that as much. Plus, you know, th th maybe it will work a little better now that there's actually a front light. So, uh, yeah, if the lighting looks better and the green screen doesn't glitch out as much, it's because officially I have a lot of lights on me. But <laughs> I digress. Uh, let's kind of talk about last week and the insanity that's been going on. So, so if you guys saw the update video when I was gonna go live for uh, Let's Make a Game Live, you will have known that Nova had a catastrophic failure. In fact, actually, it's a failure in a spot that I knew would be a possible point of contention, and I even had a plan to fix that, and I was going to do it, and I kept procrastinating. So it's really my fault that I killed the uh, Vega 64. In the back plate, there was a cutout right where the, um, the, the cross mount pressure thingy is. Don't know the official term for it, but still, point is, there was a cutout there, water, seeped from the seam into the cutout and it it most likely completely destroyed the card. Um, I tested it several times, I couldn't get it to post properly, so uh, luckily the card has its own error code on it, so like you can actually see when it's not working and know that it's just that component. Uh, but when I rebuilt the loop, unfortunately something uh, wasn't properly fastened and it actually built enough pressure around it that it launched water in a geyser all over the PC, um, which is why I had to wait until the next day to completely repair it. That being said, she's fine now. She actually looks better than she did before with just the CPU liquid cooled. It's kind of weird. I actually really like what I did here. Um, Everything kind of like was shifted around since I had to take the entire loop apart. I have learned so much between when I first built the loop and now. So like, I'm happy. I'm just a little bummed that I'm gonna have to buy a new GPU. Right now I got a 1080 in there, which is really not a slouch of a card, but I would like to put either the RX 5700 XT or if AMD actually releases it, the RX, 5800. Um, I would prefer the 5800 if it actually comes out, but I'll be completely honest. I'm looking in like the next four weeks. So unless AMD announces it in the next month, which is not likely, I'll probably get the RX 5700 XT because $400 for what it is, is incredible. And that value proposition is just Amazing. All right, Wolfie coming at you from the future or the past. Actually, both of these are the past, but the future of when you were watching. Yes. So I may have to eat my words. It looks like the Radeon RX 5800 XT is around the corner. AMD actually just slipped in Navi 12 and Navi 14 designations into their latest driver batches. Now these aren't the public drivers, these are actually the ones that kind of get built into Linux and eventually the Windows drivers. It's on a Mesa 3D um, packing system. Essentially, the presence of these drivers means that not only are these cards real, but they're coming soon. Essentially, AMD is preparing to launch these cards probably within the next month and a half, which means I'm going to wait a little bit until they announce the 5800 XT or 5800 because I would much prefer to put that, which would be an actual upgrade to the Vega 64 that I had in it and the uh, GTX 1080 that I have in there now, like an, a significant enough upgrade that it's worth doing. But that was exciting. And uh, because I kind of mentioned it earlier, I decided to, uh, record this little bit in between. So uh, back to me in the past. So that's all of the insanity that's going on with the computer. <sighs> so uh, that, and then uh, of course I can't actually run Nova at 100% until all of the air is out of the system. It's probably part of the reason why I had issues with the graphics card because I was 
uh, noticing some temperature dips, I started doing a stress test and I may have put too much heat in the loop before the air had had a time to bleed out. So again, still might be my fault. So I really haven't had too much going on this week other than, you know, making sure this computer works and formulating a full review for this. That's going to disappear. <laughs> uh, so I actually got a Razer phone too. Um, the reason for it is this is my old phone. This is a Motorola. You'll notice it's in good condition. I actually, all of my phones generally are always in good condition when I uh, stop using them. The problem though, is the USB-C port on the bottom of this phone, unfortunately has already pretty much worn out. It's refusing to charge properly. And it's charging slowly, sometimes fast charging, sometimes doing the rapid charging. And then sometimes you're just, it's leaving there overnight, you're charging and then somehow it stops. And so, I honestly couldn't deal with a phone dying on me at work again, because I actually had a Motorola do that. So unfortunately, Motorola, I gave you uh, two chances in the most recent years, because nobody else would, and yeah. So I'm giving another company that <laughs> isn't doing too well in the phone market uh, a chance, but it's a company that I know, trust, and use their products anyway, so... And I have a lot to say about the Razer phone, but I'm gonna have to do two separate videos. One essentially talking about the experience of the phone and the other one talking about the future of Razer's phone brand, but I gotta like actually do them. And I might do them this Saturday because due to an unexpected uh, day, uh, an unexpected swap and shifts, I guess, uh, I will actually have Saturday off and that will give me time to maybe work on stuff. I may be able to pop this green screen up if this is all looking good and I will make something happen, hopefully. Uh, so yeah, that's all of the pie news. Uh, I can't believe I've rambled on for like seven minutes, but let's go into the game news. I wish I hadn't seen this coming, but I was kind of predicting this as far back as 2010, I want to say. Rockstar has their own launcher now. And as I've already said, it's just another launcher. Um, that being said, the reason I say I saw this coming so long ago is because they already made you log into Social Club, which means you already had to log into like a DRM service. Hopefully though, the launcher fixes, um, is it GTA 4? Whichever one is Liberty City, that one. Uh, it has some really nasty DRM on Windows. So if the launcher is able to bypass that without having to do all the bypassing work that I had to do previously to get the game to run in the first place, Point is, uh, hopefully that fixes that problem. And I'm not too surprised. You're gonna have to download a new launch if you wanna play GTA. And it's probably in anticipation for Red Dead, which will most likely be coming to the PC shortly. Borderlands 3 is actually doing really well on Epic Game Store, but the game does appear to have some problems. Now these problems are uh, technical. <laughs> Cloud saving is an issue. Uh, the cloud saves might actually completely wipe your uh, game entirely. Um, there are some frame rate issues. There's some optimization that needs to happen, which is why I never buy a game at launch. Uh, you know, PC Master Race motto is uh, do not pre-order. And to this day, I have not pre-ordered a game since I've built a PC. <laughs> or never picked up pre-ordered game, I should say, since I uh, picked up PC. But if you did pre-order this, uh, the Switch Lite's coming out tomorrow um, or today. Actually, it might be even yesterday, depending on when this video comes out. Uh, Switch Lite's coming out. Um, the reviews are in. It is a small Switch. That is pretty much it. Uh, it just doesn't go on the TV. Doesn't do uh, the docking. It's kind of inconvenient for anything but handheld play, but at the same time, 
at the price point of the 3DS, you're getting a much better game console. And honestly, I could see this being the replacement for the 3DS and pretty much guaranteeing that the 3DS is officially dead. Uh, but uh, still on the Switch train, if you thought Farfetch'd was Farfetch'd, look at Sir Farfetch'd. This thing, I love it. <laughs> it's so dumb that I love it. It's uh, kind of like um, the Kiss style uh, Zigzagoon. I love that thing too. The Galar region is so unique looking and I, ah, I love it so much. I love this region, this uh, region exclusive Pokemon. Yes, yes, Game Freak. Uh, Sir Farfetch'd, I, I uh, all right, and then a little bit of uh, maybe disappointing news. Um, there seems to be some small technical issues in A Link Between Worlds, or not A Link Between Worlds, um, Link's Awakening on the Nintendo Switch. There is actually a frame rate inconsistency issue and it uh, is kind of weird. That kind of thing's usually a PC release thing, like, you know, on Borderlands. It's probably something that can be patched out fairly easily, so hopefully Nintendo will just fix it, which, most likely they will. It seems like the frame skipping is uh, not in, it's not super, super bad. It's just, it's kind of uh, a sticking point in many of the reviews. That being said, the game is gorgeous and it is extremely fun because, well, it's a Zelda game and it's, there isn't really a bad one, except for all of the ones on the Philips CDI. But those are like, bad in a good way. Like they're so bad they're good at this point. But with that, tech news. Cause uh, we're, we're aiming for 15 minutes and I'm trying not to edit too much. AMD is releasing another 64 core server processor. Now the Epic processors are impressive. They really are for server parts. Um, they actually get almost double what uh, the Intel server parts for the same core count will get. And they actually are like half the price. So AMD is kind of fighting the server market the same way they fight the mainstream CPU market. But they have a 64 core. This new one though, 2.6 gigahertz base clock, which is actually not bad. 64 cores at that speed, uh, that you could do some damage with that. You can definitely do some damage. Um, let's just hope that Threadripper, which is like the love child between the Epic and the Ryzen processors just comes out and is like, hey, I am like 4.5 gigahertz or something like that. Um, actually, that's still probably not likely since AMD seems to have trouble getting past the four gigahertz mark with the, the Ryzen processors, but still, It'd be cool to see like a high core count, I guess. What would you even call that? Cause it's not enterprise grade and it's not consumer grade. Enthusiast grade? I don't know. Threadripper 3 probably is all actually gonna be coming pretty soon or at least gonna get announced pretty soon. So I look forward to seeing what they can achieve. If they can get like a four gigahertz base I'd be impressed, I think. Um, and then, uh, actually some good Intel news. Uh, <laughs> Intel, 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 you wave your finger at NVIDIA. Because Intel's got ray tracing and they did it in DX11 and without special hardware. In fact, their ray tracing API is actually pretty awesome. It's gonna be implemented into World of Tanks, which is a DX11 title. It's going to be used for uh, rays coming from the sun and shadows, which is exactly what Shadow of the Tomb Raider does with specialty hardware. That being said, AMD does also have a similar piece of technology that hasn't quite been implemented in anything. So I do think that we're probably in the near future going to see a sort of ray traced future that's not entirely based off the GPU. That being said, I'm not really sure why, but like they, they could have made multi-car like multi multi GPU that the thing that hasn't really been supported and it's like being completely dropped. They could have made it. They could have made it 
so that the second card just processes ray tracing and the other one processes the visuals. I don't know why they didn't do it that way, but that's, that's just a tech person explaining with something that they probably don't know all that much about. So yeah. That's it for this week. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, you can leave a like, comment, subscribe. I do this video once a week. I thank you guys again. Wolfie out.